All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Um, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your busy Wednesday um, to be with us today. We're, we're very excited to uh, roll out our, our first of three learning labs that we're doing uh, all around getting started with Guru. So today we're going to cover um, how to build the foundation for your knowledge. Um, just a quick getting uh, before we even get started, if you have any questions at any point in the time, the uh, at any point in time, um, but ch the chat is open. Feel free to post any questions that you may have. Um, one of my colleagues is manning the chat right now and will relay any questions to me. Um, there's also a Q&A feature in Zoom if you'd like to ask a little bit more privately. So feel free to um, send any thoughts or, or comments you may have my way um, and I'll, I will be able to get uh, to them over the course of the learning lab, but also at the end, I can answer them a little bit more directly. Cool. All right, let's get started. So um, like I said, this is a learning lab. We want you to take the time to do some, some actionable stuff ha having to do with your knowledge or having to do with, uh, with Guru. Um, so by the end of the session, you will be able to structure your knowledge base, whether that's uh, within Guru or you know, uh, in the knowledge base that you currently have. Um, you'll be able to organize your groups and identify who are your experts and your experts and contributors, as well as your end users. And you'll also have the opportunity to take inventory on the current state of your knowledge and think about where do things live, who owns what, um, and what are the next steps that I need to take in order to make my knowledge even better. So some guidelines for this uh, learning lab. First off, I'm Eli. I'm the the uh, customer education specialist here at Guru. I'm focused on making our customers successful at scale and in a self-service way. Um, and so I will be your guide throughout this uh, entirety of the learning lab. Um, again, any questions you have, feel free to send them uh, my way. So this learning lab is supposed to be interactive. Um, we will have some questions and some polls um, for you to answer. We want, we want your, your thoughts and your feedback. Um, we'll also have some time to do stuff in Guru and try things in Guru. Um, and we'll give you um, some real-time demonstrations on how to accomplish uh, some of the things that we're covering. We would love for you to have your Guru instance open during this uh, learning lab. Um, as, as a part of this participation, we want you to, to be able to accomplish what we cover. Um, so please have your instance open. And if you don't have a Guru instance open at this time, we have a handy bit.ly link uh, right there for you. It's bit.ly backslash try dash guru. Um, that way you can go and sign up for a 30 day free trial very easily. Um, and we know that a lot of you like to take notes. You're totally welcome to do so. But in case we move too quickly and you miss something, um, we'll be sending you the recording afterwards and you can use this as something to reference in your uh, entire guru journey. All right. So here's how this will work. Um, so there will be three sections to this learning lab. We covered the, the main learning objectives. Each one of those will be a section to this learning lab. First, I'll cover, cover a uh, high level concept about knowledge and knowledge bases, um, whether that's organization uh, and groups and taking inventory. Um, and then we'll talk about how this concept manifests in Guru and how this will help you um, with your Guru journey and your knowledge base. Um, from there, we'll go through what that looks like for one of our customers, and uh, I'll get to that story in a little bit, and we'll kind of weave that through um, the entire way. And then I'll give you some time to try what we cover in, uh, about Guru. We'll, we'll give you some time to try that out in Guru yourself. So y'all ready for this? Cue the music. Let's party. It's going to be a good time. Um, we want this to be an opportunity for you to have some, some real takeaways. Um, so I'm going to open this up to everyone right now. Um, please, you know, let us know in the chat or in uh, in the Q and A feature. Why are you here? Um, what brought you to sign up for this learning lab? What what brought you to to Guru? If you'd like that, if you'd like to share. Um, so we'll take about two minutes uh, to let you answer that uh, that question, and then we'll we'll move forward. Chris and I appreciate you being the, the first to jump in here. That's really awesome. Um, 
Susan, that's great to hear that you're just starting to use Guru. Um, we'll, we'll definitely walk through kind of the first steps to take here. All right, Ryan, thank you for bringing three of your team members. That's awesome. We're excited to, uh, to work with you uh, going forward and we hope this is uh, really helpful for you in your in your uh, uh, in your trial process Cool, well as always chat is open feel free to, to throw your thoughts in there, but uh, we're going to move forward in the lab um, so We've worked with hundreds of customers who have realized uh, the main pain point that their team um, You know kind of gets stuck on on a day-to-day -day basis is that the knowledge they need to do their job wasn't always in their workflow and it wasn't always um, when and where they needed it. And so this is our guru mission statement. The knowledge that you need to do your job should find you when and where you need it. Um, and we'll talk more about the find you in the third episode of, of this learning, uh, learning lab experience. Um, but a lot of you might be asking right now, what is knowledge? Like that feels like a very general term, right? Um, so we've, we've gone ahead and uh, defined that for you. So again, learned from a lot of different customers here um, that knowledge is the information necessary for you to complete your everyday tasks. Um, you want to be confident in your jobs and a great portion of your confidence comes from knowing how to do things or what to reference in case you need help. Um, and so that information can look like a handful of different things. It can be an answer to a frequently asked question. It can be steps in a process. It can be you know, well-designed assets that your marketing team puts together. It could also be your paid time off policy when, when you need a break from work. Um, all of that information is the knowledge you need to do your job. It's just, it can be applied um, in so many different situations. So, so right now I wanna introduce one of our customer advocates. This is Chad. Um, he is a senior sales enablement manager at Glint and he's responsible for ensuring his sales team has all the info and training that they need to perform. Um, so Chad is a customer of Guru. Um, we've worked with him before he, he was with Guru uh, and before he found you know, our knowledge uh, management solution, Chad was spending a great portion of his day trying to get all the information to his team. And he found that it was like herding cats, um, trying to wrangle knowledge from different teams in different systems that were siloed um, was a very hard task for him and it was taking a lot of his day. And more often than not, um, a lot of that information was out of date. So today we'll go through some of the steps that Chad had to take to get to the level of guru success he has today. Um, and we'll make sure you take some of those same steps during this lab. All right, so kicking us off, we will start by talking about um, structuring your knowledge for uh, the success of your team. So again, we've worked with many teams um, with very different uh, knowledge situations, and we found that these three elements are helpful to keep in mind when thinking about your knowledge base. Um, first and foremost, keeping everything located in one location will save your team time when it comes to searching for knowledge. Um, if you're in the situation of Chad where you have to go to many different sources, think about how that kind of multiplies across your entire team. Um, let's, let's find one location to, to put all of your up-to-date knowledge. That way your team doesn't spend their time on a wild goose chase for info that might be out of date. Now, if you're going to have one central location for knowledge, you have to make sure, make sure that it's organized. Um, you'll find the most success if you organize your knowledge by a department or a topic. Um, so in this situation, the images you're seeing on the left-hand side uh, are collections in Guru, and we'll get more into collections in a second, but we've organized them to be uh, sales knowledge and security policy knowledge. Um, this is information that is relevant to multiple teams, so you you can have access to that. Um, but yeah, basically what, what I'm trying to say is um, organize your knowledge by department or by topic. Um, and if you're going to organize your knowledge by department, make sure your team has the right access to that knowledge. I was sort of jumping, in, jumping the gun before, but now here we are. Um, if you don't want policy or information to clutter the search of your salespeople, your support team, the uh, 
you know, there are certain portions of your organization where knowledge shouldn't be shared, um, you should segment that access in your knowledge base. Uh, that way, the right information is accessible by the right people. So we'll go through this diagram a little bit more in the next getting started session. Um, but this is how knowledge is, is structured in Guru. Um, we're going to focus on the highest level of this hierarchy right here, this yellow box. Um, and that is called a collection. Um, the rest of this information is more around uh, content structuring, which we'll cover in the second episode of the Learning Lab series. So what is a collection? Um, we were, I was working with the customer success team the other day and we were thinking of a metaphor that works best for a collection. Um, think of them as the concert or the festival. Um, they're the location you would go to hear music or in this case to consume knowledge. Um, you want your collection to be specific to a type of knowledge for a department or a topic. Um, so you can be specific to what kind of concert your collection is. Another good way of thinking Thinking about collections is think of them as a permission and an access based folder. Uh, you can configure who, who gets to see this collection and what abilities they'll have within that collection. So they can either author and verify knowledge or be read only users and be knowledge consumers, um, the people who look for that information on a day to day basis. Um, this is a great way for you to segment your team's knowledge um, by organizing it by collection. Um, you can, in Guru, you can make a collection accessible to multiple groups within your team or only specific to a certain group. Uh, the example I like to talk about in this situation is there is a finance collection within our own internal instance of Guru, but I have never seen it. Um, the access that I have in Guru has segmented out the finance collection so that I don't see the information that's not pertinent to me. All right, so our first poll. We've talked about collections as the one location for your team's knowledge in Guru and kind of the departmental you know, folder for your team's knowledge. So I'm curious, um, what is the one place your team goes daily for answers to frequently asked questions? Um, I'll launch the poll right now. So some of you might find some difficulty with this question in that you might have more than one place in mind. Um, we've given you the ability to check more than one place in the poll, just in case. Um, but think about kind of the primary source. I'll give about 20 to 30 more seconds to fill out the poll. Let's see, about 10 of 16 of you have voted, so we would love to get some more, uh, some more people adding in. Seeing a lot of Slack or Teams or a chat app um, being the, the, the top performer here. All right, so. Again, Slack, Teams, and the chat app. See some Google Drive, some Confluence, some Zendesk mixed in here, as well as some Salesforce. Um, thank you all for participating. This is really awesome and really good information for us because you've all chosen uh, locations that work well with Guru, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but if you found yourself in the predicament where you were like, oh, my team checks Slack, but also Zendesk, but also Box, but also Google Drive, but also you're, you're a lot like our friend Chad um, in his pre-guru life. So we talked about this before, but Chad realized that his sales team was spending a lot of time during their day looking for information in more than one place. You know, marketing had their collateral in one place, support had their answers in a different knowledge base, et cetera, et cetera. And so what Guru allows uh, Chad, excuse me, what Guru allows Chad and what Guru allows you all to do um, is unify your team's knowledge across departments and create that one single source of truth. Um, and even for, even if it's multiple different sources of, you know, uh, different tools, 
you can bring that all into Guru. All right, so um, I hope everyone has their instance open um, right now because we're gonna do some we're go we're gonna do some due time as we call at your, as we as we say here. Um, so this is our first time to dive into Guru and create something that'll set you up for success. Um, we're gonna take five minutes to give you a chance to create a collection. And what I'm actually going to do right now is exit out of the presentation so that I can walk you through what that will look like. Um, and then I'll put the instructions up on the screen so that you'll have an opportunity to follow those instructions and do this uh, within your own team. So I'm going to navigate right now to the web app. Um, this is app.getguru.com. If you're just starting a trial, this is what you'll see. Don't freak out about the blank states. We'll get this filled with really good knowledge, especially in um, the, the second learning lab. Give me one second. Guru gave me the lunchtime logout, as we call it, where if you've been inactive for about an hour, sometimes it logs you out. Um, so right now I'm gonna go over to, the, to my avatar in the top right-hand corner and click on my picture. Um, and I'll go over to the users and collections uh, screen. So this is, this is the screen in your web app where you will be able to manage uh, what, who are the members of your team, what are the groups in your team, which we'll get to, um, what collections you have, as well as who are the admins. Now, to create a collection, you do need to have admin permissions in your team. Um, if you find that you don't have admin permissions, rather, if you click on this tab, the admins tab, and you, see, you don't see your name under this tab, I would recommend messaging one of the admins so that you can get this permission, and then you can uh, you know, create a collection and, and do the rest of this, this learning lab with us. So I'm gonna go into the collections tab right now, um, and I'm gonna click create a collection. So I'm gonna give the title of new collection, give a description, this is my new collection. And then I'm going to assign a author group. Um, we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit, but the, the, the groups maintain the knowledge within the collection. The author group uh, maintains the knowledge within the collection. So I'll say the expert should be author groups. And then I'll click save and you'll have cl your collection made. So that was a very quick overview. Now I'm gonna give you about five minutes to do this um, on your own. Um, again, the chat will be open. This, these are the instructions to follow. Um, please, if you, have, if you run into any snafus or you have any questions, the chat is open and we can, we can definitely guide you through uh, um, any sort of issues that might come up. So we'll come back at around 225 Eastern, um, give you about five minutes to, to try this out.
All right, I'm just checking in now. It's been about three minutes. Um, if you have created your collection, can you give me a plus one in, in the chat right now? Um, just to see where we're at. Ryan, I, I see your question in the chat. Um, you, as the person with admin access, you can grant admin permissions um, for the other people on your team. Um, if you go to that admins tab and, and want to fill in uh, the name of your teammates, you can add them as an admin. All right, we're gonna keep moving forward um, just because it, it looks like a lot of people have had the chance to create a collection and five minutes might be a little more time, but that might've given you an opportunity to build out a couple other collections for a couple other um, you know, departments or topics on your team. Um, something I do wanna highlight, if you are brand new to Guru, you just created a trial today, um, you can try a Guru collection framework. This pop-up probably showed up um, the minute you signed into your trial. Um, we just released this. We want you to try it and we want your feedback. If, there are, if you know, these frameworks are good for you, or if there are frameworks that you would like to see, um, this will help you with structuring your content, uh, kind of what we're going to, co to cover on the uh, second episode. Um, so if you've just started a new trial, you'll see this pop up in your team. If you're already in a trial, um, reach out to us through our support team um, using the chat with us button in the web app or the browser extension. And we can import one of these frameworks into your team. Great, all right, moving along swiftly. Next, we will talk about how to organize your groups for your knowledge base so that you can get more out of your contributors, your end users, and your eventual analytics. So when it comes to your team's ideal group structure, um, the way in which you structure your groups should reflect how your team is structured. Name your groups after parts of your organization. You can get as granular as you want here. Think about you know, the segment or the type of agent that they are, maybe the level of support they are, maybe their um, management, maybe they, you know, we can, we can go on and on about uh, the naming of groups, but think about, you know, how your team is structured and have that reflected in your groups. Um, and then once you've created your groups, think about which should be experts um, and which should be audiences. When you're creating your groups, make specific ones for subject matter experts, such as managers, operations leaders, or enablement people, um, and ones for your end users, uh, those reps, the agents, the rest of your team. Um, so no matter what knowledge base you're using, access and permissions are important to keep top of mind for any member of your team. So when you're organizing your groups, think about what info, info excuse me, they'll need access to and what permissions uh, to that knowledge they should have. Should they be editing or verifying that knowledge or should they just be knowledge consumers? So when we're thinking about groups in Guru, um, we've talked about the collection as the concert, right? Think about the groups within a collection as either the artist or the audience. Um, the people who are on stage, the people who are creating the content and, and performing that knowledge, or the people who are in the audience consuming that information. Um, in Guru, when a group is added to a collection, both of these types of groups get access to the content, but some people are the performers some people create edit and verify knowledge and some people are there to experience the performance or read and learn the knowledge um, so when you add a group to a collection you're giving them access to the information within the collection what their access is depends on whether they are authors as you can see here or read only for that collection and when you hover over this little icon um, within the web app um, it'll give you more of a description as to you know what those roles are um, the more that you set up your groups now, the better it will help you in the future with filtering your analytics. Um, so you can see what authors are adding new knowledge, um, what are the 
the trends in what they're adding, um, and what are your end users looking for? So we've talked a bit about authors having ownership over knowledge, um, especially in, in a collection. Um, so I'm curious, uh, when is the last time your team used not clearly owned information? Uh, so I'm going to launch that poll right now. And we'll give about a minute and a half to answer this poll. Give about 30 more seconds to answer. Almost 60% of you have, have voted at this time, which is awesome. Kristen, I, I appreciate your question. I'm a little confused by the premise. Are you looking to have a group within a group? Um, if so, that's not possible within Guru. Um, members are added to a group, and then their permissions to a their permissions and access to a collection are given on a group level. Okay, so we've just closed out the poll. Thank you all for voting. Um, it seems that nearly two thirds of you um, had your team used, your team had used not clearly owned information in the last week. Um, that, if you're in that bucket, um, you're a lot like Chad again. Um, he, while he was wrangling up a lot of knowledge from different teams, he wasn't exactly sure who to ask if information was up to date. Um, nor was he sure what to change about that information. Um, when he was setting up Guru, he was able to assign clear owners, um, whether that was individuals or groups, um, so that they had every piece of knowledge dedicated to a knowledge owner, um, so that they would keep information up to date and verified. And that would allow for his team of reps to make sure that they were using clearly owned clearly updated information, um, and they can find all the knowledge they needed to perform well. What you're looking at here is an example, not, ne not necessarily Chad's team, but an example of how you could structure your groups within a sales collection, um, where the management, marketing, and sales leadership groups have author permissions, while the sales reps have read-only permissions. So all the knowledge is, is clearly owned by the right people. Oop, sorry. Um, and the reps have the right access to that information. Okay, so another time to do some, uh, do some stuff. Um, wow, that was poorly worded, but okay. So we're going to create a group in Guru, um, and we're going to add that group to your collection. And just as we did with the collection demonstration, um, I'll go through what that looks like in Guru, and then I'll post the uh, instructions it's kind of a two-step process, so bear with me as we run through the, through the, uh, the demo. Um, so I am going to exit out of my presentation. And so we're still on the page where we were um, when, we when we created the new collection, right? Um, we've gone back into the Users and Collections page. If you navigated away from this, it's behind your avatar. Click on Users and Collections. Um, and instead of being in the Collections tab, we're gonna start in the Groups tab. Now I'm gonna go over here to create a group. Again, quick disclaimer, um, Ryan in particular, you should add other people to be admins, but you need to be an admin um, to create a group as well 
well as create a, a, create a collection and then add groups to a collection. Um, so with my admin permissions, I'm going to create a group. I'll call this my new group. And now when I go over to this uh, triangle, when I click on it, I can see what members are in this group. So I'm going to add myself to this group. You don't necessarily have to do this right now. Um, I'm just demonstrating it for for you know y'all to learn. Um, but as you add more people into Guru, you should add them into a specific group so that when they log into Guru, they'll have the right access to the right information. So now that I've created this group, I'm gonna go into the collections tab and I'm going to add my new group to the new collection. So, my new group is read only, but I would like for that new group to have author permissions. If I wanted to change those permissions, and again, here's the, the hover over we were talking about before, but if I wanted to change those permissions, I would go over to this arrow on the right hand side and click make author. And I'll click save. My team is not that large, it'll be all right. So now people who are within the new group group have author permissions in the new collection. Don't worry exactly about per, uh, permissions right now. Just worry about adding, creating a group and adding it to a collection. And I will give you um, those instructions right now. So we'll take about, uh, let's say less than five minutes. We'll take about three minutes. Um, at 2.37, we'll come back. If you have any questions or any issues, please uh, write us in the chat. Happy to address those. All right, it is 2.37. Um, if you've been able to accomplish this task, would you please give me a smiley face in the chat? I'm just waiting on a couple more smiles before we move on.
All right. Well, we will uh, move ahead then. Thank you so much for, for accomplishing that. And you've really set yourself up for some guru success now because you've given yourself uh, a collection and a group um, that you can then, you know, go from there and, and uh, uh, add knowledge into that collection and assign it to the right people. Um, so you've really, you've, you know, created the building block there to adding to the, your guru knowledge base. Cool. So now we're going to talk about taking inventory. Um, we originally called this an audit, but this isn't, this isn't scary like an audit. We're, we're not trying to make this, you know, a big whole security mess. Um, this is a knowledge review. This is an understanding of the current uh, state of knowledge. So we, we just, we, we think of this as, you know, how do you, how do you describe the current state of things? Um, we want you to think about where your team is right now when it comes to knowledge. Um, a couple questions to keep in mind. Where does my knowledge currently live? Do I have access to that info? Do I need permission to get access to that, that source of knowledge? Um, you should also think about what information currently lives in what source and is that up to date? Um, and adding what's missing from that, from uh, add the missing knowledge into that, into that source. Um, you should also think about who owns this knowledge. Um, should they update it? Is it not relevant anymore? Should it belong to someone else? Uh, is this the sort of thing where we want their buy-in as much as, as the people who are on this call right now? Um, do they need to know about Guru as we continue to explore Guru? It, it's, it, these are all things to keep in mind when you're, you're taking inventory of the current state of things. The more that you take inventory now and the more that you find the answers to those questions now, the more it will help you in the long run with setting your team up for success um, by giving them the access to the knowledge they need. So specifically with Guru, um, identifying your knowledge sources will help with migrating information into Guru, should you choose to move that information into Guru, um, as well as with knowledge sinks. Um, these are connections that we have um, that help you unify your, your existing knowledge sources into one location so that you can search all of them at once. Um, this is really helpful if you have Zendesk or Confluence, Google Drive. Um, we, we're working on other sources as well, such as Dropbox. Um, we have Box as well. Um, but this is a great way for, for you to think about, okay, what, what, what different sources does my team need access to and how can I bring them all into Guru? Um, similarly, identifying the people that you need to contact about these, no these knowledge sources, um, that'll help you build a network of champions in the long run, and that'll encourage greater guru adoption across your team. Um, again, we talked about Chad a decent amount, but those different silos uh, that Chad had to deal with across different departments, um, we understand how much of a, a buzzkill that can be to your day-to-day, -day, and we want to make that as easy as possible. So we're going to ask the audience here, and this is a this is an active time for chat. Um, with keeping the network of champions in mind, um, can you identify one person who would be helpful in reviewing the the current state of your knowledge? Uh, we'd love for you to give them a shout out in the chat. Susan, I see your question. Um, Sync for Evernote is currently unavailable in Guru, but that's really good feedback and we will log that for our product team. Shout out Jonathan Levy. <laughs> Josh, I really love where your head's at. Um, everyone on my team, that that's exactly um, where where we want you know people to be thinking about this. Is that uh, Guru is a knowledge network. Um, it really allows you to to connect everybody together um, by connecting all the different sources of knowledge. Um, and also, I'm sure your team will be helpful in uh, getting you on board with Guru as well.
Yeah, Roxanne, I totally agree. Um, your subject matter experts will have fewer redundant questions and, and shoulder taps from your team um, the more that you build out your knowledge base and, and make sure that that's all up to date as well. All of these are awesome people to, uh, to shout out. Um, I'm seeing a raised hand. Is Keenan, is everything all right? Cool. All right. Well, no worries. Happens sometime. Um, so we're going to move forward. Uh, if you've identified one or many people who would be in your network of champions, guess what? You're just like Chad yet again. Um, so when Chad was thinking about the current state of his team's knowledge, he realized that there were a lot of people in places to search for and keep track of. Um, and it felt like a very disjointed time consuming process to maintain. So with Guru, Chad and all of you will be able to build a knowledge network like we talked about of multiple teams and sources, just like the sources you see here, um, so that you can ensure that everyone has the info they need to do their job. All right, we have last go time of the learning lab. Um, we want you to make a copy of this spreadsheet and I'll, I'll show you what the spreadsheet looks like now. But if you want to type in uh, the bit.ly is uh, bit.ly backslash no review, K-N-O-W review. That's a knowledge review. We tried to abbreviate it, make it a little bit hip for y'all. Um, thank you for posting that in the chat as well. Um, so I'll show you what the spreadsheet looks like right now. This is a great chance for you to think about the current state of your knowledge. We would love for you to make a copy of this spreadsheet and fill it out. Um, we've also provided you with some helpful help center links um, on the right hand side that'll give you some, some resources and we highly recommend checking out other links on our help center. Um, it'll be a, a good Bible to reference um, throughout your guru journey. Um, but these four links in particular are on migrating and syncing knowledge as well as collections and, uh, and groups. So we'd love for you to make a copy of the spreadsheet, start thinking about your knowledge sources, who owns what, um, what knowledge does your team need and what access do you need? And for next time, let me go back into presenter mode, but for next time, um, we would love for you to have this filled out. Um, this will be very, very integral to um, when, we're, when we're talking about content and knowledge in Guru. And, we want uh, you to bring this and be prepared to share. You know, we, we've, we've made this a, a chat experience and uh, we, want, we want to hear more about the current state of your team's knowledge. Um, so give this, give this spreadsheet a shot, um, share it around with other members of your team if you think it would be helpful for them to do some sort of a review. Um, we found that it's really helpful for building a network of champions if you give that, uh, that transparency. Um, so yeah. I'll give everyone about a minute to make a copy of that spreadsheet. I'll put the link back up here. Okay, I'm gonna move along swiftly so we have some time for uh, Q and A. Um, so these were the learning objectives that we talked about in the beginning. Um, we covered structuring your knowledge base. We talked about organizing your collections by topic or department and the importance of you know creating the concert for your audience and for your artists. Um, we talked about organizing your groups, um, understanding who are the subject matter experts and making them the authors for a collection and who are the uh, you know, knowledge consumers and making them the read only users for a collection. Excuse me. Um, and finally, we talked about taking inventory, you know, thinking about the current state of your knowledge uh, and where you'd like to be in the future. What, what do you want to accomplish by putting this, this time and effort into your knowledge base and how that will set your team up for success. I'm going to make a couple more shameless plugs right here. Um, the first being episode two of this Learning Lab series um, on August 8th at 2 p.m.
p.m. Eastern, we will be covering what does good knowledge look like. Uh, we'll focus on making your knowledge look good. It's, it's a little bit like Queer Eye and a little bit not. Um, and bringing that info into Guru effectively in a way that you know, makes sense for your team um, and is easy to consume for those end users. And then episode three of this three-part series uh, will be on the 14th, again at 2 p.m. Eastern, same time. Um, so we will focus on being in the know and effectively rolling out Guru to your team and how to keep knowledge uh, top of mind on the, in their day-to-day. -day. So uh, again, that's August 8th is the first one at 2 p.m. Eastern, or excuse me, is the second one at 2 p.m. Eastern, and August 14th is the third episode. You'll be getting an email with a follow-up, don't worry. Um, so just some resources for you going forward. Um, these will help you along your guru journey, whether you're at step one or step 100. Uh, spoiler alert, there's no step 100. Don't worry about that. Um, the Guru Help Center will be, a, again, a great Bible for you to, to keep by your bedside as you're using Guru. Um, it's a great place to, to go for quick answers. That's help.getguru.com. Um, and you can also interface with our team. Uh, we do have uh, a support team that's on from eight to eight, I believe. Um, that's Eastern time. Um, so that's support at getguru.com. There's also a chat with us button um, in both the Guru extension and the web app. Uh, and we've also just rolled out this, Calum this uh, Calumly link uh, for our scalable customer success team. If you're looking for a quick one-off Guru consult consultation about your knowledge, this is a great way for um, you to interface with our team and we can give you more of a, a guided approach. So if you found this learning lab to be awesome and you want to give it five stars or you think there's so much more that I could be doing and could be helping you with, um, we've made a bit.ly here for you to give me all of your candid feedback. Um, that's bit.ly backslash get guru started. Um, this will also be sent out in the follow-up email. Um, but if you want to talk to me directly, this is my email address, epankin at getguru.com. Um, happy to to hear what you would have uh, liked to have in the learning lab or what other educational resources would be of value to you. Um, please reach out if you want, have any questions or want to continue the conversation. Awesome, so we've covered a lot today. Um, we're gonna leave some time, we have about 10 minutes uh, for any questions that you might have. Um, there is the Q&A feature, there is the chat. Um, if you wanna unmute yourself and, and you know, Give us a shout out, let us know, um, and I'm, I'm here to answer some of your questions. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it, and hopefully we'll see you for episode two.